I am Lakshmi Tanpur. I teach to the Department of Public Administration. And uh, the topic of my PhD presentation is Grassroots Governance, the Role of Service Centers in Service Delivery in Nepal. Basically, I chose this topic because uh, Nepal is still uh, as, has a socialist economy and agriculture, and most of the people here, they are dependent on the agriculture. That's why I chose this topic. Uh, but still, right, Mr. Government is saying that uh, there has been no investment in agriculture, but the adequate output, adequate uh, results of the target has not been fulfilled. Uh, in this, in this uh, regard, I really wanted to find out uh, what is the government of agriculture services in Nepal and uh, where is the gap. That's what I wanted to find out. Uh, for this reason, I chose this topic. Uh, but later on also, I will also talk on this matter about the gap. Right? So, uh, to explain the concept of uh, grassroots governance, uh, the major components of the indicators of governance has been used, uh, and governance has really become a topical issue, not in the national level, but also in the international level. International level. And the main objective uh, of governance uh, is to make changes in the system, and especially for the developing countries, is more important from the humanitarian point of view. For the developed, uh, for the maybe for the developed country also, right, for better management. Uh, that's why some writers said that right, means governance basically focuses on functional rather than the structural aspects. Uh, so governance, in a sense, uh, it is to explain not only in one sense, but it can be explained in various senses like economic, political, administrative authority, uh, right, which really helps to manage the country's affairs. Uh, and when we are talking of governance, uh, it is interesting to, to see that uh, right, this is not a new concept. Uh, there was governance, there is governance, there will be governance. Uh, but here, when we are talking of governance, we are talking from the viewpoint of good governance. Governance in the sense of good governance. Uh, and uh, when we talk of the history, it's interesting to see that uh, not only in the Eastern philosophy, but also in the Western philosophy, there has uh, been the practice of uh, practice of governance uh, from the from prehistoric time or from the historic times. Uh, in Eastern philosophy, we can think that uh, there is uh, generally the writing and as well as the practice of Balmiki, uh, as well as Kautilla, and in Western philosophies we can see that uh, there is the explicit information of uh, governance uh, uh, by Aristotle, uh, Aristo Aristotle and Plato. So, uh, some writers believe that the concept of governance uh, these days uh, has arisen due to the due to the effect of uh, her, her way of uh, her way of democracy, which basically tries to expand right, basic human rights as well as the overall management of countries uh, so that uh, the ills of the society, ills of the political system, of the social system can be elevated. elevated. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is just the background, but I'm going to spend my time on this, right? So, <coughs> the, So, uh, moreover, the concept of governance uh, became prevalent uh, from uh, 1989 uh, after the World Bank is used this concept uh, means in relation to uh, means, uh, bad governance that was prevalent in Africa and South Saharan countries. Uh, so, uh, next is the uh, next is the review of literature. Right? When I'm constructing the conceptual framework, I have tried to use uh, the concepts which are which are given from the review of literature, right? And uh, Warren Hayden, he proposes uh, two parameters of uh, governance. One is the effectiveness, and another is uh, legitimacy. World Bank, uh, right, means it, it explains uh, the the parameter of parameter. I mean, indicator. I mean to say, sorry, right? Indicator of uh, indicator of governance as uh, the institutional capacity. So uh, that is uh, the car says uh, is people's participation, ownership in policy making, and process through specialized governance is uh, the indicator of governance. Uh, so Eric Neumeyer, he says participation, adequate resource, social ability are the major indicators of governance. Uh, likewise, Sexter says uh, governance is the capacity of public institutions in providing services in the uh, 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 to, uh, services to the service uh, receivers. Uh, right. 
So, like roles, uh, role concentrates, concentrates uh, on the procedural matters, likewise Gary Stalker, right, means he also talks of the institutional authority, as well as you can say that, that is the uh, authority delegation. Likewise, UNDP, it explains uh, 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 governance consists of the mechanisms, process, and institutions uh, through which citizens and groups articulate their interests, exercise their legal rights, meet their obligations, and meditate uh, uh, their differences. Uh, Amita Singh, rightly talking about effectiveness, she says that governance should make accessibility, availability, uh, availability, and affordability of public services to the ocean of people. So, uh, to be very frank and honest, uh, I have made a bit more literature review on this topic. It's around uh, 40 pages, which I haven't included here, because I haven't registered a bit earlier. That might be the reason, right? But I, I have just uh, put some, uh, some, uh, some of the concepts which are little bit better. So, <clears throat> this is problem. Means, uh, administratively, Nepal is uh, divided into five different regions, 14 zones, 75 districts. Uh, uh, 927 ilakas and 300, uh, sorry, 3,915 villages and 58 municipalities. And as uh, in another, means there are some emerging municipalities which I have included here, right, in my study. And what is happening is that uh, in the Nepalese context, the administration is mostly central, but still, right, means uh, there are there is some kind of chain of command, or there is some kind of uh, organizations uh, from the central level to the to the grassroots levels, right? So, uh, means, uh, most of the ministries, such as health, education, agriculture, post office have their one offices at district level, which play a significant role in delivering services under the under their jurisdiction. So, there are also sub national levels, uh, like you can say that, uh, that is BDC as well as agriculture service centers. These are the only examples. Uh, and these units are administratively, right? They are. I used to be financially managed by district level offices, uh, but the finance basically comes from the central government, uh, which I did later as well. Uh, and uh, uh, there are basically two different concepts. I mean, there seems to be a long chain involved between service delivery units at local levels and uh, ministries, ministries in terms of planning, programming, budgeting, and staffing. And despite, you can see that, uh, there, uh, despite some of the writers, they view that uh, means uh, service delivery mechanism had been means giving very good performance, but some others say that uh, no, service delivery mechanisms have not given better performance. <laughs> so there is the contradiction, uh, the contradictory views that we can see. So, and uh, this is the basic claims that we can see here. It has been claimed that uh, policy provisions of service delivery has substantial effects on changing the political as well as social system into the direction towards governance. Uh, right? This is the concept which is uh, presented by Sharma and Wangi. And the next one is Quirrell assays. How is the Quirrell assays? That means uh, a group uh, right, that centralized ineffective delaying, right? government mechanism handling and in the, uh, development activities have not been able to prove its uh, efficiency in service delivery, right? And especially when we are talking of service delivery, right, there are various types of mechanisms. Uh, maybe uh, it, it is in education, it is in post office sector, all right? Uh, uh, it is in agriculture sector as well. But my concentration is to see the governance of agriculture sector. So in this regard, uh, right, uh, in this regard, the government has promulgated uh, various types of policies. But it is surprising to see that uh, there is not a single act uh, right to explain agriculture service delivery in Nepal. It is it is not legislated up to now. So Nepal doesn't have a very long history of concrete agriculture. Uh, sorry, uh, service delivery system only from 1995 with APP, that is Agriculture Prospective Plan, and Agriculture Policy 2004, <coughs> uh, National, sorry, National, National Agriculture Extension Strategy to, to 2007 and three year interim plan, they have tried to explain why agriculture is important in Nepal. Though there has been an attempt to, to explain the importance of agriculture service center or agriculture right from the past plan, but still you can see that uh, means it was, uh, it was most of the plans were means uh, made in ad hoc basis. Uh, not they were not very much country, they were not very much uh, means country. Right, I mean to say. So in this context, uh, means uh, it is very interesting to, to see that uh, the government is saying that means uh, it has been putting more investments in agriculture sector, but uh, 
the agriculture sector has not been able to give the adequate results, uh, right? That is what he says. So in such a case, in such a case, uh, right, as agriculture service uh, centers uh, are the are the lowest tier of so agricultural service delivery, right? This research uh, basically tries to find out, uh, right, whether there is a gap uh, between policy and practice, right? Whether there is a gap between policy and so this study investigates whether the efforts to deliver any services have been successful and examine why and how grassroots governance of agriculture <coughs> has become effective or unachievable in the Nepalese context. Uh, so furthermore. This study tries to decipher whether there is a gap between policy decision and education in the delivery of agriculture services. So, on the basis of the research problems and the review of literature, I have raised some questions which are presented here. And especially the first, the research question means emphasize on policy provision. Second, emphasize on delegated Edu uh, delegated educate authority, <laughs> and next one is uh, is related with the competence. Another is infra structural facilities. Next one is the coordination between various types of agencies which are providing uh, agricultural services. Uh, and, uh, and and also it talks of the process, right? That is how are the service providers uh, delivering services and the quality of service delivery. And the uh, next one is what is the opinion of service receivers and service providers regarding service delivery at grassroots level. And the final one is factors affecting agriculture service delivery at grassroots level. So uh, these are, there are basically four objectives, uh, right, which are delineated with this study. So the first one is to review the policy provision, next one is uh, to explore the institutional capability, and the next one is what to see the delivery process by the, uh, as well as the quality, next one is what means uh, uh, to analyze uh, the opinions of uh, uh, service providers and service receivers on various aspects of service delivery such as quality, process, and uh, satisfaction. <coughs> so, uh, out of the research questions, as well as the objectives, uh, these, these hypotheses have been developed. Uh, so higher the institutional capacity, uh, better the service provisions. Uh, next one is what the procedural simplicity makes the service delivery <coughs> effective. Next one is the quality of the services, deli service delivery right, determines the acceptance of people's participation of, and, and oh. sorry, I'm sorry, uh, determines the acceptance uh, of public services, and no, yes, uh, I think there is some problem. And people's participation yes, makes the delivery of services effective. Mm. So there are four different hypotheses that I have uh, tried to explain. So this is the conceptual framework. Uh, and while, yeah. while deriving the concepts, uh, right, these concepts uh, basically affect the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is effectiveness of agriculture governance at grassroots. In other words, we can say that that's the grassroots governance of agriculture services. Uh, and independent variable, authority delegation, fact, when we talk of authority delegation, it is more concerned with the policies, and it comes from the review of the policy, whether what sort of authority is given to the uh, to the service uh, uh, service providers, uh, right? That is what I wanted to find. So delegate authority rules, regulations, and as well as the procedural simplicity. Because uh, agriculture uh, means, uh, especially in the uh, legal provision, means agriculture service centers uh, are given certain duties, uh, certain responsibilities. Uh, that is what I'll, I'll analyze. Uh, next one is institutional capacity and use of IT, because this is the time of, this is the time of using IT, so means whether IT has been used in, uh, in, in delivering agriculture services uh, from service centers or not, uh, and allocation of resources, it, 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 it basically explains both to the means human resources as well as the physical resources. Uh, next one is employees professionalism, and employees professionalism can only be enhanced uh, when there is more experience, <coughs> training, right, and skills. Uh, so next one is for people's participation. And uh, when we are talking of people's participation, right, means it is uh, from the service provider side, uh, because if there are three different mechanisms, institutional mechanism, organizing mechanism, and developing mechanism, right, that can increase people's participation. And what I mean to say by institutional mechanism? Institutional mechanism basically emphasizes, right, whether, the, whether there is the existence of the institution or not, 
and whether they are delivering the service or not. Because in Nepal, there are so, in, in short cases when there was the conflict, you see, I mean, some of the institutions, they were moved. There was the existence of the institution, but what's called delivery means didn't occur. So it's sometimes that is happening. There are the institutions, it's possible that, right, due to the, due to the resource gap, the institutions have not been able to deliver the services as well. So next one is organizing mechanism. So organizing means organizing, basically explain to the organization or organizing the unorganized groups uh, and developing mechanism are developing social workers and women, etc. That is why I said. So these are the three, right, <coughs> means mechanisms which are, means uh, related with the people's participation. So I'm uh, here, means uh, these are independent variables which really explain to the dependent variable. One is time, means, uh, if it means the agriculture service, uh, sorry, governance and grassroots can be judged, right, means from these, uh, these qualities, you can say, components, uh, right, timely delivery, quality of service, assignment of set goals, right, and people's satisfaction uh, in terms of availability, affordability, and accessibility. Not more. So, <clears throat> this is the methodology that I'm going to use. Uh, I have used, I have to say, I have used, not only going to use. Right, so research design and methodology. And my research uses, uh, uh, uses sequential explanatory design. And this is the pilot phase, that's why there is uh, Qualcomm as well, because means we'll get both the qualitative as well as the quantitative information, that's why that's the pilot phase, right? And the basic phase, the main phase is the first phase and the and first phase as well as the main phase and the third phase. There are basically three different phases that we have seen, right? So means Firstly, right, means uh, I'll collect data, right, from the survey and they will be quantitative in nature and they will be analyzed and later in the next phase, right, means I'll collect uh, qualitative data and uh, means uh, uh, to see in if I can see any gaps uh, or any uh, means uh, uh, information gap with the quantitative, right, to fulfill that, uh, right, or to find out the reality on it, then I'll collect uh, qualitative data. And the last will be the entire interpretation of the analysis as well. And how it will be done, that is that I have explained here, but let's see. Okay, now next, next is uh, selection of study area and nature of data. And this is Nepal, and I think I have already explained means uh, about Nepal means there are there are five development regions and others which I'm going to explain here, right? Means uh, <clears throat> while selecting the study area, I use multi-step random sampling. And first of all, to select just the development region for positive sampling method is used. Next one is, and now this can be the question, right? Why purposive sampling, right? There can be the question, why purposive sampling is chosen? The basic reason is that uh, there are altogether 378 uh, agricultural service centers in the country. And the highest number of agricultural centers, right, they are in the, they are in the, uh, means, uh, they, are, they are in the, um, central, I, I just recently, like, sorry, that is missing. Central development region, the, uh, in the central development region. So, central development region is chosen out of the five development region. Next one is what? Stratified sampling method, right? The first for district, uh, right? Means in central development region, there are three different ecological regions, right? That is, one is the Himalayan, another is the Hili, and the next one is the Krai or the Plain area. So, in this concern, right, means I'll, I'll stratify. First of all, what I did is that, means, I mean, uh, uh, from the Hili region, I selected, I stratified and I selected, right, one district that is Rashua, and from the, uh, uh, sorry, from the Himalayan that is Rashua from the hilly region that is Nani and from the plain region that is uh, Para district that I have selected. Right, and uh, random sampling method for service centers, sir. Right, means uh, especially what is happening in uh, Nepal, uh, Nepal in the case of agricultural service center is that means uh, in the Himalayan region there are, there are, uh, six plus six, okay, that is there are six, uh, six, uh, <coughs> So especially in the Tri region, there are four service centers, right? And in the Hilly region, there are six. And the, and the and in the um, Himalayan region, there are there are 
there are four right so that is what we see and out of the service centers uh, means i have selected uh, one service center from each district uh, on the basis of uh, on the basis of random sampling uh, method right and uh, next one is what next one is uh, nature of data and this study means uses two different types of data one is the qualitative another is the quantitative and qualitative quantitative data will be obtained through the survey as well as uh, means some of the information I'll obtain right from the data, or the records, or the publication, etc. And on the other hand, there will be the qualitative. Qualitative data will mainly be gathered from uh, from interview with the key informants, uh, focus group discussion, and uh, right. I'll also ask some uh, service uh, service uh, service <coughs> receivers as well. So means. The number of the respondents will be involved in the survey will be 150. 50 from each service center, they will be the service receivers. And the other 60 will be, right, means from the, from the service center, district agriculture office, as well as uh, uh, Department of Agriculture and uh, Ministry of Agriculture. So th there will be 30 means from that. Uh, they will be the key informants as well. So uh, uh, I think it's clear now, right? And this is uh, population of study and sampling. Population of study and sampling. And uh, I think uh, means uh, when we are talking of the interviews, uh, right? Means especially means those people who are holding the office at the time, right? Means they will be asked when we talk of the public officials. Uh, but in terms of the service recipients, uh, right? Means the information will be collected or uh, interviews uh, will be uh, will be conducted, uh, right? From the service centers, uh, and there will be institutional heads as well, local head three three from the three service centers and district here, three from the three district uh, uh, district offices. Uh, so question is, I think I have already explained, and focus group discussion, right, it will be from the service receivers, right, to get, uh, I mean, uh, uh, more information on the topic. And you see, what is happening in Nepal, in Nepal is that, means uh, agriculture services uh, are being delivered, uh, not on individually only, but they are also delivered by groups. Uh, so that can be, there are various users groups, uh, right? Users groups of agriculture. And they will be contact, contacted, and I'll make uh, elaborate discussion with them, and uh, try to gather as much as information <laughs> I can, right? So, uh, so altogether there will be 210 respondents. Uh, I'm running out of time anyway. So, there is, uh, in my, one thing I'd like to tell means, uh, what's, what's happening is that, means there are 12 pages in which I have explained the methodology, which I haven't included. I have just given the symposis overview of uh, methodology in my proposal, right? This is the 12 page that in which I have explained elaborately on reliability and validity. And the question I will be today to find out the presence of any duty and independence, and uh, each and every person respondent will be conducted an interview to ensure that the data obtained was genuine. And reliability basically means focuses on consistency and validity on the other hand, right? Uh, means uh, tries to show the truthfulness of the data, right? So <clears throat> this is the reliability and validity. And analysis, uh, analysis of data. So analysis mostly in descriptive statistics and export, and it will also be in exportive ways as I'm also conducting the qualitative, uh, uh, I'm also using the qualitative technique to gather the information, the, the interview and others. Uh, so with quantitative data, we presented tables, figures, mean and percentage, and some other stats, analytical tools also be used on this. Uh, so significance of research. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I can't 100% guarantee, but to the best of my knowledge, no research has been taken right, to explain the, the grassroots governance of agriculture service, agriculture service delivery in Nepal. Right? So <coughs> I hope uh, this study can be useful by right? both, maybe one minute.
Okay, so means this study may be useful, right? Means for the policymakers are also for the people who are means working to the service delivery centers as well as to the common common public. Uh, so it's no kind of situation. I think I don't have to explain it. And limitation of the study. And uh, one thing I would like to tell on this matter, okay? And uh, it, uh, there is a limitation of the studies, means the topic, uh, right, is, seems to be a bit wide. Uh, but still, right, means uh, there is uh, service centers that is written there. But here I have written that uh, there are various mechanisms of the government, uh, right, which are delivering the services. But in this case, I am only, right, means conducting the research of the agriculture service center, not of the others, right. So and, and it will talk of the governing pattern, not of the economic uh, economic uh, effectiveness as well. So limitation of the study, right, means uh, uh, basically data access and generalizability. And this is the proposed plan. So uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good show. Yeah. So uh, now I invite first uh, this. You have a lot of time from yesterday. You are the first presenter. Enough of this. Yeah. Please, Pastor. Then I start speaking. Okay. First time taking that. Okay. Thank you. And I'd like to thank Govind Sir and Rajiv Sir for giving me the session and as well as Dr. So, uh, congratulations, uh, Lakshmi Kant, uh, for your nice presentation. So, I think uh, this is a relevant study uh, to the context of Nepal because I think uh, after the civil conflict, the country is in the process of reframing the democracy. So, therefore, the decentralized governance is an important topic uh, in this context. So, I have a few remarks with regard to your proposal. So, I start with your title. Can you go back to your title? Okay, so you are going to study the grassroots governance, the role of service centers in uh, service delivery in Nepal. That means um, I could understand that you are going to study the agriculture service delivery uh, through the service centers. So that part is uh, missing in your title, I think. Okay. So therefore, we could not understand what you are going to study. Uh, so it is better to incorporate <laughs> that part. And in the meantime, grassroots governance. So is it uh, similar to decentralized governance? Because I think uh, these both concepts are talking about the same thing, decentralized governance. That means de uh, the decentralizing the powers to the local level bodies, governance bodies, in order to deliver effective uh, services to the citizens. Right? So in that way, you can think about it. And uh, then uh, if you look at your research question, I think you have too many research questions. And uh, some of are uh, very similar, I think, uh, repeated, I think. So for an example, what is the quality of the service delivery? And the last one, what is the opinion of uh, services, service receivers and service providers? So I think uh, you can um, uh, think about it. You can combine uh, those uh, two uh, research questions into one. And uh, in the meantime, so the study is uh, largely focusing on service agricultural service delivery through local uh, tires. So policies are made by uh, policy makers, politicians, and implemented by bureaucrats. So can you you can think about the, the degree of uh, political commitment and the bureaucratic willingness in delivering agriculture services to the local people? So how far and to what extent political and bureaucratic willingness is there? In delivering effective services, agricultural services to, to the local people. And uh, last uh, comment is that, so I read your uh, uh, variables. So in your detailed proposal, you have mentioned that um, dependent variables such as capacity of governmental institutions, process of service delivery, allocation of resources, people's participation, and the authority of uh, delegation. But uh, if you look at your framework, uh, in which uh, you did not uh, detailly discussed about uh, allocation of resources and the process of service delivery. 
I think that part is the issue. So since the study is focusing on service delivery, I think uh, according to my understanding, you can have a separate indicator on allocation of resources. So how that impact on service delivery? So that is uh, my comments. Thank you. <coughs> okay, Professor Navarata Bandara, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'd like to write a new proposal uh, despite my busy schedule in the computer. When I have to left my computer at home. <laughs> but Probably it, yeah, the two. What a problem. <laughs> we can't see you. Sorry. No? Yes, fine. Yeah, brilliant. But anyway, I uh, put your uh, hypothesis section into my smartphone and <laughs> the day. Okay. So I was uh, reading about your hypothesis and I, uh, I, I actually defer this what uh, with this promise. But governance is actually not govern not government. So decentralization is with the, oh, this old term government. So it's a structural arrangements, you know, those things are there, but he's going beyond that. But I have this problem. Now you have introduced new uh, in your title, the grassroots governance. I think you have to give more attention to give a definition to that. Right? Yeah, it is, I think, uh, that is where you can uh, uh, develop your thesis as an original contribution to knowledge. You gave much time to your research area, those things. But I find that, but uh, in your hypothesis, if you go to that, uh, there, there, you have identified areas, how you have defined that. Right? Now you say that the grassroots governance include institutional capacity. That means actual capacity at the grassroots level. So then you have, you know, here you said that institutional capacity number one in your hypothesis, right? So how you are going to accommodate that to the grassroots concept of grassroots, right? There may be grassroots institutions. That means that goes to the decentralization, right? How much then the how much of the, how the delegation. To use the word delegation, not devolution. Delegation. Yeah, so that means administrative delegation, how much of powers, capacities, resources provided, those, all these things are there. And then procedural simplicity, I think that is also goes with the institutional part. But how are we going to differentiate both? When you have institutions, there are procedures. So we have to uh, distinguish between these two you want to take this as separate hypothesis, then you go to the participation. <coughs> so then actually you have identified three elements of your grassroots. Uh, give a more attention to give a definition and have a, have a very comprehensive conceptual uh, explanation, includes those three elements. So there you can find sometime new. So then you come quality of services, to say it determines the people's participation. And people's participation in what way? People may be participate in decent making at the grassroots level sometimes. Then people can be accommodated <coughs> to the delivery of services. I know you put words on the iPod 5 pound, you put word partnership. Yeah. Right? So people's participation may include the partnership also. So then you can actually give a, you know, definition to grassroots. What is what is grassroots grass governance? Right? Yeah, then you can actually place your research, study on a sound basis. You need a conceptual framework, finally it could become the theory. Right? This is a theory building finally. <coughs> so what you found from the field, right, to be used to strengthen that uh, conceptual argument. Right. Then it could be applied to other areas also. You are using only agriculture. There may be a, there are reasons to select that particular area. You can justify that why you select the agriculture. There are some other delivery areas also. So
so uh, that is what I want to say quickly. But I think that you have a worthwhile proposal in hand. So here, I, the, my my for the weakness is you didn't give much attention to the right uh, to the conceptual or theoretical framework of your study. You have to develop your own theory. Right? right. So these are the, the, the hypotheses are to develop that theory finally. So I think yeah, that is how what I could put uh, from your presentation. Eh? But it's good. So you have to go beyond hierarchy, it's not just you said life and now you know that there are no other concepts like how the government will govern them. Right? Right? Public, private, civil participation, those things are there. So you have a good proposal in hand on things you have to develop and then overall this help uh, you <coughs> know <coughs> so that's what I have given at this moment. Thank you. Right, since I'm sitting beside <coughs> Professor Bandara and uh, Professor Tekna Dakal, I'm contaminated. <laughs> so I'd like to give comments before others come in. <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, very good show. Uh, Lakshmi Kant. It must be a very popular teacher. The way you teach uh, with a lot of enthusiasm and passion you know, for teaching. I'm sure the students are very delighted to hear your presentation. So very good show. Uh, now I have uh, to follow up with Professor Bandara just said about and I think it's for all that what is as I was mentioning what is your contribution actually. How do you define grassroots governance or local governance or economic governance what is your contribution? How do you see it? After reading all these theories, what is your conclusion? How do you conclude it? Give your own opinion. That's very. That's your contribution to science, and that's the significance of your research. You know that you are contributing something. Second is you have to lower down your ambition when it comes to what this research can do. Everybody seems that you are a policymaker. You want to solve, you know, local governance problems. You want to solve economic governance problems. You want to solve, you know, citizenship problems. So that have, you have to lower down. You are not a policy maker, you are a researcher. And you are concerned with basic research. And basic research is about science, scientific arguments. So don't forget that, your role as a scientific researcher, not as, as a policy maker. <coughs> right, uh, this is a kind of general comments for everybody. Now if you go back to your uh, this analytical framework, I want to ask you one question about it. this one. <coughs> now uh, you have these three uh, sets of independent variables and also one set of dependent variables. Uh, have you collected data no, or no? Okay, so how do you, uh, <coughs> it also may be applied to uh, Buddhiman. But I have a lot of questions on the basis of this. Uh, right, you ask the same people the same questions? Uh, no sir, means I'm not going to ask uh, uh, questions, you see, it's with survey, right, for the service providers, it will only ask to the uh, service receivers. Okay, if I can go to the uh, screen. For example, here you ask the citizens. Yeah, service seekers. Service seekers. Yeah, service seekers. And here you ask? Yeah, to the to the key informants and put people. But how do you relate to this? The two sets of the data are two levels. Yeah. Different types of independence. How do you correlate? It will be two kinds of uh, silos, you know? One silo is these findings, one silo is these findings, and there's no connection between them. How can you do it? Okay, I do it. In this, in this case, what I'm going to do is that uh, provide this type of data, right? Means, uh, especially uh, as there will be the key informants, right? Interview, as well as focus group discussion, right? Uh, from the uh, service seekers' point of view, right? Then I think this, this uh, we, we can make. No, we cannot do that. Quantitatively, we cannot do that. You have to have the same data at the same level from the same respondents on both these. Otherwise, you cannot correlate. That's the, you know, this is the kind of, kind of methodological challenge. You cannot do that. If you ask uh, this one to service seekers and this one to, you know, these officials and others, but, uh, data are the two different, you know, respondents. And you can correlate. Uh, How can you correlate? The, 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 the thing is that uh, when I'll be asking or I do some key comments, uh, right, uh, uh, with the interview guidelines, uh, the questions to which are related with the independent variable will also be asked to them. To, to whom? Uh, to the service seekers. Okay, then if yeah. you have the service seekers, the same yeah. thing. Yeah. 
that is fine. Yeah. That means that your key, uh, key informants are other supplementary. Yeah, exactly. Your main exactly. data comes from the service seekers. Exactly. You have to stick to exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You should exactly. overemphasize the role of these key informants. <laughs> no, this is your main, actually, the service seekers. Yes, exactly. Right. Uh, okay, let me see. You said you, you already thanked me, so you strategically managed to keep me quiet. Minister, I have got the contribution from others, the Jamil Shavra and others also in two three uh, defense, <laughs> you see. And I thank not only you, but I, I have thank to everyone. I'm Shikin, sir, and all. And not less to Narendra as well. <laughs> So maybe you should you should little bit uh, simplify it. You say it is still uh, it makes you uh, a bit difficult. Uh, like how you this effectiveness, how you uh, measure the effectiveness, you have to list down. If 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 service delivery is quick in terms of time, or, or, or what are the uh, criteria of effectiveness to measure. Uh, and, uh, one thing. Second is, uh, from the right hand side, this left hand side, this independent variables, yeah, for example, just uh, take one case, IT. I guess none of the, this type of office has a computer. <laughs> do, you, do you believe? Do they have? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So, this is constant, so it's not a variable. <laughs> so, so, that's so, what I will find, that's no problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and maybe you don't need to uh, do uh, some type of uh, IT is any other one. Another is, you select the, your, your methodology. You select from the uh, mountain one, then, then hills one, then from Tarai one. Uh, uh, what is the logic? For example, in the mountain, how many uh, this type of service centers are in the mountain? Out of them, how you select? How many in the hills? Out of them, how you select? And how, how many in the, your, this stratified random sample doesn't apply here. Right? So doesn't, maybe it is a, your, uh, I have to say, maybe just when, just when sample, because, uh, again, in one district, there could be more one, two, three, four like this service centers. But out of them, how you select the one? Or are you selecting whole? Are you covering the whole one district? Are, are, are you talking about the, the, the uh, uh, one unit is one district or uh, one service center is one unit? How you? Uh, no, how I'll, you uh, I'll, uh, I think I talk a bit on this matter. Right? Means uh, there are four service centers in the plain area, out of four service centers, I have selected In one, one district? Yeah, one district, yeah. yeah. And from the hilly area, there are six service centers. From six service centers, no, no. I have selected one. No, no. Out of the hills, well, first of all, the, the, the selection of one district yeah. is also logical. No. You, you should logically yeah. determine this uh, one district is selected. Uh, with your, using your judgment, don't write uh, stratified random. This is my uh, suggestion to you. Uh, another one is uh, the, the selection of those groups. You wrote there 10, 10, 10, that is th uh, 30. 30 are individuals or 30 are groups? Groups. 30 okay. groups? No, no. 30 people. No, no. That is your. That, then, ten, then, ten in, in, in that group. case, no, no, no. Then, then in that case, one group, three groups, only you. Okay. Yeah, you, 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 you discuss with the. Uh, with the three groups, not not thirty groups. Not 30 groups yeah. yeah, you should also play uh, uh, it. And uh, I think uh, for the time being, I will uh, <laughs> I, I, I will uh, add more comments for the time being. I, I want to anyone Professor Salah. Well, uh, of late I have been venturing to write a book which I am almost 70% done, a Governance at Grassroots. And what Professor Bandara has said, that's the primary question. What 
does it mean when you say grassroots governance? Actually, you have to qualify it. And uh, just to share my personal experience with you, what I did actually, the, the title of the book is Governance at Grassroots, the role of Indian Parishad, the Nostra. It's a grassroots level governance I'm trying to look into. Now, what you could perhaps do, just a suggestion, it's not, you know, it's up to you to really qualify it. If I were you, because I could see that you're looking into more of agriculture service delivery. So in that case, your grassroots governance focusing agriculture could most probably come up with uh, conventional definition of governance where we talk about accountability, transparency, access, quality of uh, participation, and compliance to regulatory framework. Now we could most probably define your grassroots governance in agricultural angle saying that accountability in the agriculture sector at the local level, transparency responding to the need at local level in agriculture, so the case of right to access, and a mode of participation, again focusing on agriculture at the village or level that you're looking into, and of course, compliance to the uh, framework, regulatory framework. Then you could most probably come to an operational definition. I could give you one of the operational definitions that I developed for my book, we can share with you. Now, as far as, uh, I think it's, I had the same concern that Dr. Jamil has raised, now it's clear to me, because had you had not this uh, common questions in both, then these are not really correlated to each other. So what you have said about your analytical framework, now it's clear to me that you have same questions for both the groups. It's not necessarily the, your present dependent variables is directly going there. You have questions specific for both groups, so it's clear to me. Now, uh, it's not clear, so you qualify it. <laughs> now about the, it's, it's not for you actually, for almost all researchers that I have been seeing here for last two days actually now. Now, it looks to me that you seem to feel that, well, since I have to find out something new as a researcher, because the PhD research has always been getting a, a doctor of philosophy, that means you're coming up with a new original knowledge. It doesn't mean that you have to stretch your hands and legs almost in any direction. Now, I see that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine research questions. And I always tell this story to my students, and I just, for the sake of again repeating it to you, when I presented my draft research, PhD research proposal to my supervisor, and then he left for two months to Germany, and he carried along with him, and he came back, and then I thought I did a good job, because at that age, everybody thinks so. And then what he said, Salahuddin, how many PhDs are you looking for? I think that was the greatest shock in my life, if not the insult in my life. I said, excuse me, what, what do you mean by that? And then he was very honest. He says, look, you have as many as nine question, uh, research objectives and with seven research questions. That would easily qualify you for at least three and a half pages because so ambitious it is. In other words, what the lesson was, and it's for all of us, actually, for the researchers. If you really want to create something original, go deep inside. I think Jamil was telling the other day that go penetrate deep inside and start spreading yourself out. So all these questions, if you're really honest to yourself, I'll find that you are really putting your effort and your analysis thinning out in all the directions. So you could please lump them together. I think this 9 or 12, 40 meters have, both for your objectives and research questions. Especially, I would say, research questions. You could, the way it is now structured, it can very well lump three broad questions, or max four. That sufficient enough for your PhD. Now, and regarding the framework, I think it's better for you to give a more precise operational definition, that of a description. Because I did notice that your each of your variables that you have given, I, I didn't find a clear operational, I got a detailed description, 
but I didn't find much or at all sort of indicative variables there. So that, that would give me some idea about what it is. So please make sure that when you bring it, precisely come up with a very measurable, precise indicative indicator, define it. So the indicators has to be very, very precisely done. Capacity, you have narrative, people's participation of a narrative, and authoritative delegation of a narrative, but I would like to have more precise, measurable indicator. I understand you already started working. You must have, by now, defined. Because unless you have defined it properly, you can't really develop an instrument. Your questionnaire cannot be really, you know, you'll be in deep trouble in developing your questionnaire. That's it. But otherwise, I find it very interesting study. And, and the title is very exciting. But you're again, uh, perhaps, entering uh, to a conceptual debate because you're about to be uh, sponsoring a new concept which is not very much often used in the literature, grassroots governance. And I'm with you. Thank you.